Welcome to Bird Burger, where we talk about all things wildlife and nature oriented. Newest camera technology has made it ridiculously easy to get good wildlife photography images. Whether it be high megapixel resolution sensors or incredibly fast autofocus, we can have it all. The Nikon Z9 has been some of the pinnacle of this amazing technology that we can experience as of recent cameras today. And today I'm joined by Jamin Hunter Taylor, who's a master in wildlife photography, to talk about some of the newest camera technology and how the Nikon Z9 holds up against the competition. How are you doing, Jamin? Hey, doing real good. Yeah, nice having you on again. You were uh, one of the first people that I ever had on, so it's nice having you on as the first return person on this yeah. podcast. And you shared some super cool and valuable stuff in that previous episode about Thanks. kind of just some tips and tricks and just why, wild, why you do wildlife photography, a bunch of stuff. So I'm excited to have you back. I just want to give a quick shout out and a special thanks to Hunts Photo and Video for sponsoring this episode. And actually at the end of this episode, if you guys are interested, they're going to be giving a special offer away on the Nikon Z9 for anyone that's interested. So make sure to stay tuned to see how you guys can get your hands on that. But um, back to kind of our conversation, um, you were a previous Nikon Z6 II owner. Yep. I know you've owned lots of Nikon cameras before that. Quite a few. What? Uh, kind of difference have you noticed between i guess those cameras out in the field and the nikon z9 yeah well before we get into that let's go back to hunt's video uh okay Hunt, hunt's photo video because uh uh they were instrumental in getting me a z9 uh i had tried to get uh nps nikon professional services membership for quite a while and uh was not getting like any feedback wasn't getting you know, like I was like just spinning my mm. wheels like, okay, why am I not getting anybody to like, you know, review my application? You know, I qualify, all that stuff. Uh, got a little frustrated because the Z9 was only shipping to NPS members first, you know, and the waiting list for non-NPS was like months and ridiculous. And, you know, I had a pre-order in through Adorama and it was just like sitting there and this item is on back hmm. order, you know, so, so frustrated. So, uh, I reached out to a rep from Hunt's photo video who, uh, I'm supposed to be doing some, um, some various workshops and stuff through them coming up. So I'm really excited about that, but, uh, worked with a rep there and he's like, yeah, yeah, here, just contact this person at, at uh, Nikon professional services and they'll try to get you hooked up. And so they connected me with that person and, uh, Dang. you know, like a week later I'm NPS. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so uh, <laughs> then I put in, I canceled my order for the Z9 through Adorama and placed an order through Hunts. And uh, two weeks later, I had a Z9. So there you so, go. Yeah. Plug to Hunts photo video. They hooked me up. Uh, awesome yeah. guys. They, they proved to me that they wanted my business and they were willing to work for it. So I was like, yeah, you know. Mm. Uh, really, yeah. really good service. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's like the difference between, I mean, shopping, you know, on Amazon or at Adorama yeah. or things like that, that yeah. you're saying you're just going to get lost in that crowd versus with hunts. Um, I've only been more recently connected with them for a few months now, but man, it's been such a good experience with them. Just, uh, I've gotten some new gear from them as of recent, some yeah. other things as well. And they're just, they, they, they're a, they're a much smaller, like really invested in you as a customer and want to yep. build that relationship and they'll make it work. They'll find a way to make it work. And, uh, yeah, so that's awesome. That's super cool. Thanks for sharing that experience. That was, that was totally unplanned and unscripted. <laughs> that's just honestly, Jamin just sharing his experience right now. Yep. So <laughs> hey, you, you gotta so share, cool. you know, uh, when you get good experiences like that, I, I think it's worthwhile to share it and, uh, you know, mm. plug the people who are actually doing you know, doing the good work and, uh, caring. But, uh, anyway, so, so back to the Z9. Um, I've only had this camera for, oh gosh, like two months, maybe. Um, so I'm trying to put it through its paces. Uh, there mm. are things I like about it, things I love about it, things that I'm not crazy about. Um, uh, mm. but one of the things that I like about the Z mount system so far is uh, Nikon's kind of aggressive software updates. So they've been they've been pretty aggressive with uh, like putting out continuous software updates. You know, every few months they've got mm -hmm. hey, like you know the Z six two, Z seven two. Here's a new software update. Here's improvements on this and that. And like the Z nine, you know, was just released, and then they've got this big major uh, software release 
already for it, you know, like actually I think there's been two. Uh, so that's a really big deal. You know, that tells me that's a company that's invested yeah. in their product and, um, not just going to like put it out there in the world and be like, all right, good luck with that. You know, it's like, Hey, mm. we're going to continually work on improving this product, even though you have it in your hands. I'm hoping that the things that I don't care so much for will kind of work themselves out and, uh, and that the camera will just end up getting better and better. Uh, but I was uh, mm. really excited because we've got our Arctic turns back up here. Mm. Uh, and they're such a beautiful bird and they fly from like, uh, Antarctica all the way up here. That's like the longest migration of any bird in it. They're wow. like amazing. They're so graceful and they're flyers. And, uh, so anyway, so I went yesterday and got to photograph them for the first time this year. And, mm. uh, at first, you know, I had my, my Z nine on a certain tracking mode and, uh, and it was abysmal, you know, I was like, this, this sucks, you know, <laughs> and, uh-huh. uh, and then I was like, oh yeah, I got to, I've got to switch for birds in flight. You know, I've got to switch to this other, um, wide animal, you know, autofocus, mm. uh, instead of the 3d tracking, you know, so I switched it mm. over to uh, animal wide and then, you know, that gives me a little box to kind of, kind of focus with and, uh, to kind of get my, you know, get the creature within that box to kind of start the tracking. It's a little bit more nuanced, a little bit more specific and, uh, man, tracked it like a champ, you know? So like, wow. I would say like my keeper rate was definitely in, improved, uh, with just using that mode, even, even like, uh, than any camera I've ever had before, you know, because mm. my Z eight or my D850, not Z8. <laughs> Z850, <laughs> let's, be clear, yeah. let's be clear here. Uh, my D850 uh, would lose lose tracking, you know, if I did like group autofocus, you know, a cluster mm. of autofocus points to try to track a bird or something. Yeah, I would end up losing it and, you know, it'd go to the background or something and then trying to like re-grab the bird again, you know, was almost impossible, you know, unless I'm like yeah. rack and focus with my hand, you know, or trying to manual focus, Um like you do, like, I don't understand that, but <laughs> I don't understand how <laughs> you do that, do man. Uh, I'm only doing it because I'm on Panasonic, so. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, but still, uh, yeah, that's, that's skill. So way to go on that one, man. Kudos. Um, <laughs> but yeah, these turns are insanely fast and graceful and, uh, and beautiful birds. And so just being able to like, just going through and reviewing some of my photos from yesterday, I was mm. like, well, I think my keeper rate is like way up there compared to what it was, you know, and that's just due to the fact that the Z9 was able to, to lock onto these birds and track them as they're flying. That's cool. Yeah. The Nikon Z9, I mean, I, I, I've never gotten to test it personally, but from knowing people like you or a couple of the other wildlife photographers, I know that have it in their hands and are using it. So it's, it's amazing to me just like, even I think comparing maybe two three years back even like i mean there was still really only one type of bird you know or animal autofocus maybe at most two types and now it's like you know hearing you talk about the z9 how there's so much customization even within animal autofocus detection that's super cool that you can kind of pinpoint how you want it to react a mm-hmm. little bit better than ever or better than ever before and uh yeah it's very cool you have great wildlife photography it's difficult to imagine um when you get to like kind of the level where you're at or some of these other really good wildlife photographers are at how can you get that much better um according to the gear that you're using um has this switch to the nikon z9 enabled you to be able to get more shots than you think you ever have been able to get before do you think it's made you a better wildlife photographer what kind of would be your thought on that Uh, to start out with that question i would say that uh my you know again my keeper rate is is increased so Mm. um problems that i used especially in action it sounds like yeah especially in action uh my da50 would lose focus at critical points um you know, duck coming in for a landing and it tracks it up until it's just about to, you know, do the, <laughs> do the cool wings out and feet cool down, pose. you know, and then I'm, I like, I lose focus and it's like, <laughs> seriously, man, like it drops focus at that critical time. And I didn't do anything different, you know, still like, you know, the group focus points are all on that bird. It's just the camera decided, Nope, not going to yep. do that for you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I think in those instances, I'm hoping for, um, to actually, you know, get those shots that my D850 was lacking. Uh, and, mm. and interestingly enough, like I, I think uh, my old D500, when I had that, actually did a lot better with that sort of stuff. 
mm. D850 was not great for action, uh, particularly like hmm. bird bird action. Um, at least that was that was my takeaway from it, my experience with that camera. So I think on that level, uh, I'm I'm hoping for you know some some higher rate of keepers and, and actually getting some of those cool shots. Um, yeah. But in terms of like making me a better photographer, I, th I think that just comes with time and experience and, um, mm. and also a bit of, of planning and patience, you know, uh, waiting for those moments that are, you know, those singular type of impactful shots, you know, because I mean, I can, yep. I can photograph a, you know, a duck's, swimming around in front of me in, in the water all day For long days, yeah <laughs> yeah but it's that one shot where maybe he dips his bill in and there's water dribbling off or something like that you mm. know and yeah that's the one you know mm -hmm. uh you know we we talked about uh the idea of uh that one unique thing you know the piece of the piece of the resistance uh i butcher mm -hmm. that every time i say it but <laughs> you know what i mean basically <laughs> that yeah. idea that <laughs> there's that one thing, you know? And so I think striving continually to strive and, and look for that one thing in your photos and in my photos, particularly, um, uh, mm. is going to help, you know, like develop my eye out and, and have those moments of patience. And of course, like 20 frames a second, uh, <laughs> you know, that can, that can help to like lock in that key moment or something, you know what I mean? So I think gear can take you so far, uh, and certainly can like up your game. Like I got to come back to like at the end of the day, if you don't know what to do with that gear, you know, how to compose, yep. how to, you know, how to recognize certain moments. Uh, for example, like, um, I was photographing a Northern shuffler the other day and you can, I I've learned when they're about to take off. Mm. There's you know telltale I mean? signs. Because, yeah. Yep. He'll, he'll lift his bill and, and you'll see it. Start, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's when, you know, so uh, mm. a good rule of thumb is when he starts doing that, just get you know, some of these high end cameras that you can just, uh, you know, they're taking XQD cards or like high capacity, uh, mm -hmm. high rate of, uh, like writing to your card, start shoots, just hold down the shutter. You yep. know, if your camera can handle it, just hold down the shutter and then wait for it, yeah. you know, because he's going to, he's going to take off and you want to be able to get that. That's a really key thing is, is like kind of reading your, your uh, subject and, and seeing what's, you know, whether it's a sheep and during the rut and you see, or a bull moose, you know, like when I'm photographing bull moose in the fall and I see two bulls, you know, if they're going to square off, they'll start rocking their heads because mm. they're showing off their antlers and trying to intimidate each other. Yeah. And if they're both doing so it cool. and they're just kind of circling each other, you like, get ready. Yeah. Man, it's <laughs> about to go off. You know what I mean? You know, half of that is, you know, being, being at the right place, it's uh, recognizing, you know, that these things are going on and that uh, to watch for the signs of like, hey, action's going to start, you know, mm -hmm. be ready. So, yeah, yeah, it's a combination of things, but um, yeah, you can certainly play a part in it. Yeah, I love you sharing that. Even um, I think that, yeah, sometimes it's easy to fail to recognize the importance of gear alongside skill, kind of like you're talking about, even in the example that you just shared of like how you were talking about with the Northern shovelers when they're starting to tilt their heads up. If your camera can handle mm -hmm. it, just start holding it down and just letting it yeah. burst. Um, right. So, but at the end of the day, let's just say you have like, I don't know, the worst of the worst, really old or like a point and shoot camera, you know, that can't take too much or I don't know, whatever, whatever. I don't have a specific example in mind, but let's say you have something really bad like that. You might only get, you know, a, a really quick chance at being able to get that moment of takeoff because you can't hold it down so long ahead of time. You're not going to get as many frames in that burst or whatever it may be mm -hmm. versus when you have that nice gear, you're able to get, you know, a lot more opportunity with that. You're able yeah. to kind of be enabled to get a lot more. Um, so, yeah, so it, it does show that to a certain extent, gear must matter at least some, right? But like you said, mm -hmm. um, being able to, if you can't recognize that in the first place and you don't have the skill or the knowledge to recognize that, it doesn't right. matter how good of gear you have. You're not going to be able to get it. So I guess um, a question that I have around that is kind of what... Uh, 
does gear matter as much as um, maybe we say it does? And if you had to give it maybe like a ratio of like, you know, 50% skill, 50% gear, 90%, you know, skill, 10% gear, whatever it may be, what would kind of that ratio of gear to skill level be in your wildlife photography? <laughs> That's a tough question. You know, like, I think it, it's hard to say for myself at the moment, you know, I'm not going to give it a little bit of thought, but in general, um, you know, that can have so much variance, you know, depending on the individual, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like there's, there's skill level involved and, and all of that kind of balances itself out, you know, because if, if you have a ton of skill, but yeah, you've got a low end camera that's given you like four or five frames a second, you know what I mean? Like that it's limits hard. you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a limiting factor. I mean, you can still do amazing stuff with it. You know, if I had a older camera and you know, that didn't have a lot of stuff, I could still, uh, you know, I think get some, get some interesting things with it. They're just, it wouldn't be as, uh, you know, as robust. It wouldn't have as many options as I have, yep. you know, with like 20 frames a second versus like something like five. Yeah. Um, but then again, like if you have high end gear, you know, somebody who's just getting started and they're like, Oh man, I've got money to burn. I'm going to like, go get the latest, greatest thing. And yet like they have no experience or very little experience mm. and like, you know, they're center composing everything and yeah, uh, not working for the, you know, not working to really set up the angle. stuff in it. Yes. Yeah, set up everything um, and, and work for those interesting angles and, all, you know, all that kind of stuff that goes into, you know, uh, not only composing your shot, but like all the field work that you do, like to like find your locations and like recognize behaviors and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So that's yep. an imbalance. You know what I mean? So, so there comes with a balance of like, and I think that's, you know, sometimes why gear is so expensive <laughs> is because when you get started, you know, you kind of like, I, I cut my teeth on like the cheapest thing, like oh, yeah. $600 for a, you know, D550, 100 and a kit lens, you know what I mean? 70 to 300 or um, something. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. It was like 7,300. And then I got a Sigma 150 to 500. I was like, Ooh, I got this big lens, you know? And then, uh -huh. uh, you know, so on and so forth from there, you know, I've kind of like stair stepped my way up as my, as my skill increased. So I don't know. I, I maybe take a shot and say like 60% skill, you know, 40% gear. Mm. I don't know. Maybe that's all. Yep. I don't know. But oh, yeah. I feel, I feel like me. I've put enough time and energy and, and thought and planning into, uh, you know, my photography and, and, you know, how I compose things and how I post process things and all that kind of stuff that, you know, gear just is kind of like that extra bit that helps me to do what I do. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, it's just, it's just the tool. Yep. You know, yeah. it's just another tool. So I think the person behind it is really, it should always be that greater factor. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of what we talked about last time is you were, you talked a lot about that concept of using tools and how can you use these things to your advantage yeah. and, um, yeah. you know, in a much larger sense too, we talked about, you know, rules versus tools and how do you view those things? But yep. that's a lot of good stuff. Yeah. Even, um, I think comparing that concept of gear versus skill uh yeah i really enjoyed getting to film um that video on my main channel maybe that was about like a month and a half ago now two months ago with my cousin where he got to take my uh a little bit more expensive setup and i got shipped that super cheap budget setup from <laughs> hunt's photo and video and yeah. i was able to do that comparison and it shows that um like all day like i was just thinking my brain like man i wish i had like you know more reach or i wish i had you know a little bit uh you know sharper images or stuff like that especially when i pulled mm -hmm. back into editing i was like oh man this sucks but uh <laughs> but at the same time there was things that like my cousin um because he was brand new to it he'd literally never done it before so obviously you'd expect he doesn't have that experience yet um there yeah, were things yeah. he didn't didn't recognize and maybe wasn't able to see while he was out in the field that i was able to so overall at the end of the day it was really interesting comparing that of like what actually turned out better did skill actually matter more hmm. did gear matter more you know so very cool yeah, to yeah. see that yeah in terms of camera bodies um I think, I mean, they're loaded with a ton of features nowadays. You have so many features and functionalities <laughs> involved in these new camera bodies. Yeah. It's so hard to decide what's most worth it when you're kind of considering your options. Um, in reference to the Nikon Z9, is there any features that you like most about it? Uh, I, I like that. I detect tracking, man. It's 
pretty sweet. I would say, <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say like the two things that uh, stand out to me th- that matter to me personally is, uh, which is a change from the D850 because, you know, like the D850 was such a great camera. Uh, the, the photos that I got from that were just, I really loved the amount of detail and the colors and everything, you know, mm. so um, just phenomenal imagery that, that, you know, that's, that camera would get the, the problems that I had with it is when the autofocus and then also like, you know, it was capped at nine frames a second, you know, mm. with that, like, you know, you had to put a the extra battery grip on it to get that. Mm. Uh, so I would say, yeah, like the two main things is just like that eye tracking is sweet because, you know, say I've got a wading bird or something like that and he's hunting, you know, like a greater yellow legs or something like that, you know, and he's hunting in the water. It's so hard with like the D850 or something like you mm. set your single point, you know, you set your single point, <laughs> but then like trying to like actually, you know, as his head is bobbing and like darting into the yeah. water and that sort of, you know, like trying to keep focus on that is so hard <laughs> you know if you set your if you set your focus point you know for his eye and you're trying to track that eye well you might get your go be going through and culling your photos and you'd be like hey i got the eye that time but his tail's cut off yeah you know because like you were moving the <laughs> frame to position it yeah yep and it's like oh <laughs> yeah so so i would say like the the really sweet thing about the Z9 and, and other cameras like this that are, they've got this new technology is that I can compose in camera. Like I was, I was blown away because I was like photographing this bird, this duck in flight as it was going by. And I was like, Oh man, I can compose it as it's flying. You know, yeah. like it started out like kind of at the edge of like flying out of the frame. Mm. And I hate that, you know, like yeah, <laughs> it's gotta be room in front of the bird, not behind yeah. the bird, you know, yeah. the frame. So I was just able to like go a little bit faster, get the recompose while the fo- while it's <laughs> tracking the bird. And I was just like, wow. Phenomenal. Man, that yeah. is awesome. You know, I've never been able to do that before. So last time I brought you onto the podcast, I asked you what the single most important thing was in wildlife photography. And I'm kind of curious to ask that same question, but under the frame of kind of gear and what's the most important thing to consider in your opinion during a camera purchase? Oh, during a camera purchase. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll go back. Okay. So if you don't have, if you don't have a favorite brand, you know, like your go-to thing, if you're not a Sony guy or a Canon or if gear, you know, if brand doesn't matter to you, mm. uh, something that a good friend of mine, uh, whose wisdom, you know, I rely on often, he said, uh, go to the camera store and pick them up and go with the one that feels best to you in your hand, mm. you know? And I was like, man, that is so good mm. because if it doesn't feel good, like you're not going to be comfortable shooting, you know, if the ergonomics aren't right in your hand, like it's just not going to, you know, because ultimately when you get to the out and and you've got experience shooting it and that kind of thing, like it kind of becomes an extension of you, right? Mm. You know what I mean? When you're out there, like it's, it's a tool in your hand, but it like feels so much more like just an extension of, of who you are and like, yeah, you know, it's so natural in your hand and that's how a camera should feel is is very natural in your hand so it doesn't if it doesn't feel like that yeah there's a yeah there's an issue because that's going to hinder your Hmm. uh ability to kind of like not think about that you know like if it just feels weird you know you're going to think about that yeah it feels you'd be like ah you know i wish this wasn't weird i wish this (laughs) yeah so i think that's i think that's a really big deal like just having something that's comfortable in your hand that you can just feel like you know, part of you with that kind of thing. Otherwise, you know, I would, I would go with like, uh, it, it depends on what you want to shoot, you know, what's, what's your thing. You know, if your thing is landscapes, then you don't really need something with like eye tracking and all that kind of stuff. You don't even need something with like, uh, you know, 20, 30 frames a second. You know, if, if that's all you're yep. doing, then like get something like, you know, for Nikon, it would be something like the Z7 II, mm. you know, something that uh, has a high megapixel rate because you want to capture all those intricate details. Mm-hmm. 
but like you don't need necessarily all, all of the bells and whistles of like yeah all that kind of stuff because you're you know your focus is landscapes so get the camera that's gonna like speak to the stuff that you want to go after yeah yeah and what you're saying is super good in the sense of like knowing what your target is in terms of your type of photography what fits best to that and i think that that speaks even yeah. more so to like how you were talking about the Nikon Z9, how fantastic that autofocus has been for a lot of people that matters a lot. <laughs> and so, um, the Nikon mm -hmm. Z9, I mean, when you look at all the features and you look at what it's able to do, it really is made to be a wildlife photography camera, like hands down, uh, that and a sports photography camera is like really what it's built to be. Um, so knowing yep. those things of what these cameras are good at is so important. And also what you said, uh, around ergonomics and how it feels in your hand like i mean at first when i was like m more at the beginning of getting into things uh i was considering sony and one of the biggest reasons why i didn't go with sony is i could not stand how they feel in your hands like and that's a that's a pretty common thing from what i understand is a lot of people don't like the way that sony's feel they're getting better slowly i think uh, is the general <laughs> consensus but and some people like that that's great i'm not trying to make a judgment for everyone but uh but yeah like just the way it felt in my hand was just like Ah, this doesn't feel right and uh as a wildlife photographer i think if we're doing it to enjoy ourselves and to kind of get a good yeah. experience out of all of it the the experience of how you feel just being present out in nature and capturing images is just as important sometimes as the results that you're getting and so if you're not enjoying that experience as fully as maybe what you could be then yeah i think that's a great point to consider like you said so i like that but yeah thanks for sharing all the stuff that you shared there's a lot of valuable stuff that you shared regarding just gear and nikon in general and uh yeah it's cool just getting to hear your experience and uh hear the valuable things you have to share so thanks for coming on and one day hopefully i'll be able to join you for one of those full day excursions that you're talking about where the sun never goes down <laughs> yeah but, man uh, you gotta come up you gotta come yep. up alaska is something to experience for something sure something special yeah well thanks for coming on jamie yeah. appreciate you being here yeah thanks for having me again i enjoyed it for those of you looking to purchase the nikon z9 today you're in luck the sponsor of today's episode hunts photo and video is giving a discount to anyone who reaches out within the next few days and wants to buy the nikon z9 from everyone that I've talked with, including Jamin, they've been incredibly insatisfied with the results. And honestly, if you have the money and you're looking to upgrade anyways, and especially if you're in the Nikon system, you can't go wrong with it. Reach out to my personal representative below in the description and let him know that Jeremy sent you and he will gladly hook you up with a special discount and make sure the Nikon Z9 gets into your hands as soon as possible. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.